It's season four of the Wendy Williams Show. Today, pop superstar Lance Bass making a serious career move. Plus, fashion's hottest fall accessories. And Chris Brown and Rihanna did what? The latest on their shocking tattoos. Now, here's Wendy. We've got the best show ever, okay? We're gonna get to the bottom of a whole bunch of stuff, including some juicy stories. Like, is Kristen Stewart back with Rob Pattinson? I know, really? And we're also gonna get to the bottom of Chris Brown's shocking new tattoo. I promise you. Let's get started. It's time for Hot Topic. Are you trying to trap me? You know I can't. I'm wearing sleeveless. I can't. <laughs> anyway. How you doing? So yesterday, if you didn't see the show, you missed a good one. The legendary fashion designer Betsy Johnson was here, and she's 70, and she's fabulous, and she did a cartwheel and landed in a full split. <laughs> yep, there it is. <laughs> Such an inspiration to us all. But anyway, so Betsy uh, invited me to her fashion show. You know, Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week is still going on here in New York, and Betsy's show was last night. And if you've ever been to a fashion show, like for Fashion Week or, or any of the other like official fashion shows, you know that they only last for you know 10 or 12, at the most, like 15 minutes, and then that's it. You get all prepared, you watch the fashions, and then you go home. F Betsy was uh, celebrating a combination of things, including her birthday, and uh, the fashion show was like a total of three hours. Oh, it was great. They had champagne out of those little champagne, you know, you drank right from the bottle, but not swigging. <laughs> you know, with a straw, so, you know, everybody's drinking and burping all night, and <laughs> there were some really great people there, all of New York's beautiful people, including the queen of Fashion Week, Week Fern Malice. And here she is, we took a picture together, it was nice seeing Fern. Uh, pardon my expression, the lighting was bad. <laughs> Uh, Robert Verdi was there. You know him as the fashion uh, stylist that wears the sunglasses, the bald man with the glasses up here. And you know Jill Zarin from New York Housewives. She was there. Her husband had just given her a Birkin bag and she was so nervous that she was going to lose it. <laughs> and then George Katsiopoulos was there from Fashion Police and he was there with the Fashion Police cameras and so many other people. I just had, I had a really great time. Betsy Johnson, thank you so much and we will always love you here at the show. Yeah. And then I got home and I was watching TV. Did you guys watch The New Normal last night? Yeah. I know, well, listen, as sitcoms go, I used to think it was great if you fed me the part where I'm supposed to laugh, but I actually like sitcoms with no laugh track. Do you know what I'm saying? Did you notice that about The New Normal? And many sitcoms on TV now, no laugh track, so I'll laugh when I wanna laugh. <laughs> and I laughed. It's on NBC and it's getting great reviews and it's about this gay couple and they have a surrogate having their baby and the surrogate has a bigoted grandmother played by the legendary Ellen Barkin. And it's, I mean, it just seems like um, the, the bigotry from Ellen Barkin in this show is equal. It's not just the gay, it's, it's everybody, I mean, bigot. But <laughs> Nene Leakes from the Atlanta Housewives is now acting and Nene, Nene, I know. Our girl, Nene, friend to the show, plays uh, the personal assistant to one of the gays on the show, and she's getting high praise for her acting, but she says, uh, she said recently that she doesn't want to abandon her acting career, that she's, but, you know, if, if she did come back to reality TV in another type of show, that she'd want to do, like, the Real Housewives, the all-star edition, <laughs> and she cited who she'd want to be on it with. Okay, it would be, be it would be her, and then Bethany Frankel from New York, <laughs> and then, look, and then, 
Jill Zarin from New York Housewives, Gretchen from Orange County, and Teresa Judy from over in New Jersey. But to me, that's so. For a second, I thought I saw Randy Jackson sitting in our audience. <laughs> Tell me if you can spot the man in the center with the bright blue jacket. <laughs> How you doing, Randy? <laughs> I like all the color in your jacket. I guess you knew where you were coming, right? <laughs> Most colorful show around. How you doing? Mm -hmm. My co-host, a mess. Good. All right, but you know, I was thinking that that might be too many, too many people on on one show. Really, we could just focus on Nene and Teresa. I think they'd be perfect together, right? Be perfect. Anyway, so that's the new normal. It's getting a lot of rave reviews. Matt Roush is coming here from uh, TV Guide magazine later on in the week. When's he, when's he coming? He's gonna be here tomorrow? All right, so he's gonna talk about that. I also like that new show, The Mindy Project. I got a little clip of that. I, I like that. And I'm also gonna invest my time in 666. That's Vanessa Williams' new show. Uh, and also, I wanna invest my time in Nashville. No, I know Nashville, David. <laughs> I was getting to it. Nashville with Hayden Penetier. Anyway, we'll talk to Matt tomorrow about new TV. Anyway, it's now time, you guys, for hookups and breakups. <laughs> Okay, first we'll talk about a hookup. It's Eva Longoria, a new man in her life. You might have heard, maybe you didn't. According to reports, it's New York Jets quarterback, Mark Sanchez. Whoa. Do you like that? He's juicy, he's cute. She's a little tiny number, so she looks like a pocket watch next to everybody. Do you know what I mean? Um, they were recently spotted together all over New Jersey, and they don't live in the part of New Jersey that uh, is, is like near New York. Uh, he, he, not they. Uh, Mark lives like in central Jersey where it's very quiet. So it's, ve you know, to see a celebrity is like, right? It's a whirlwind romance, people are saying, but they've had romantic dinners, uh, nights on Broadway. Uh, they've been spotted at the grocery store near his home. Uh, they, they've spent the weekend in the Caribbean and allegedly she wears a blonde wig to avoid being spotted. <laughs> but for people who don't wear wigs all the time, they're usually the blonde wigs that are made out of the synthetic and they're really shiny and, it look, and, and they look like, who's that lady wearing a fake blonde wig? <laughs> So I guess for the picture that we just saw, she decided to forgo the wig and just let it go. But he's 25 and she's 37. Ooh. Yeah, it's juicy, but not worth perhaps the full investment. I don't know, we'll have to see. I mean, Eva and Mark are both Mexican-Americans, uh, but I was at, as I told you uh, the other day, I was at the Jets opener on Sunday, Jets won. Um, and, and, that's Santonio that me and my, my son are standing with, but what the arrow is pointing to, do you see those binoculars? Okay, you know I'm always on the hot topics. <laughs> so I get to the game, I forget my binoculars, but I, we were in the owner's box, um, uh, Woody Johnson and his wife Suzanne, so I asked Mr. Johnson, I said, you know, do you by any chance have any extra binoculars around here, or can you just tell me, is Eva Longoria here with, uh, with uh, <laughs> oh yes! I told, and he got it. He gets the show, he helped me out. Every, you know, his wife, he's like, no, I haven't seen her. I said, well, get me the binoculars and I'll look. <laughs> P.S. Swarovski binoculars, I've never seen them, they, they're fancy. Uh, but no crystals, just the Swarovski tag. Anyway, so I'm looking up in the box and I see nothing and I'm looking at the game, but I see nothing, I see nothing. Finally, we get called down to the field because it was Curtis Martin day and they retired his number. So that's why you see us on the field. That was at halftime. So when we go down to the field, I say to my son, I say, all right, you hold the binoculars for a moment. You know what uh, Sanchez looks like. You take a look to see if he's there while I, you know, pose with San Antonio and, you know, do some other things. <laughs> the whole game, we saw nothing. And all I'm saying is if you got a new man in your life and if he's a star football player with a quarterback and if it's opening day, you're gonna make it your business to be there. I'm just thinking. So that's why I'm thinking that this is just a nice grown people fling not something serious. I don't know. <laughs> but I'll leave you to decide that. So anyway, uh, on to, and uh, yeah, we'll be watching. Okay, so on to our next uh, um, hookup breakup. We're talking breakup this time. Dancing with the Stars, Judge Carrie Ann Inaba. Now I'm not on the show anymore, so I'm back to liking her. 
you have to understand, she was part of the reason that I got booted off second week. <laughs> I thought I had an inside track because she had been on our show a couple of times, but no, she was stone-faced and judging harshly. So I was hating for a moment there, but I'm over it and now I'm back and I'm sorry to hear about your broken engagement. Her boyfriend, Jesse Sloan, there he is, the ex-fiance, proposed to her on Regis and Kelly back in March of 2011. Do you remember? This is back when Regis was like, oh, it was a grand gesture. Look, <laughs> I'll set the scene. So Regis sitting there and Carrie Ann's filling in for Kelly. And then all of a sudden, Jesse surprises Carrie Ann by walking on the stage, the lights dim, violinists appear from nowhere. He drops to one knee and proposes. She cries. Regis is holding back the tears. They met. <laughs> Look, they met on uh, one of those match services online because she had come to eHarmony, on eHarmony. Um, look, and she talked, she talked, I told you she's friend to the show. She come to our show and told us all about it and showed the ring and eHarmony and I go for dating online. Like, I don't look at that as any low class thing. Yes, if, if you know, if you, if you, sidebar. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are looking to marry and not to hook up, if you're looking for a real relationship, you've got to cast your rod in a lot of different fishing holes before you come up with something good. So use these sites. But what I'm saying is that he's 40 and she's 44, perfectly age appropriate. She had waited all of her life and apparently so had she. They got engaged and now it's off. No word on what has happened. Things ended quietly. Uh, she, uh, but see, there are a couple of things going on here that I have to talk about. First of all, the grand gestures. This is just me personally. I don't like grand gestures. Like, do not uh, become engaged to me on my birthday, Valentine's Day, in front of my, on this stage. Don't walk out here if I was a single talk show host and ask me to marry you. Even with me and my husband, we've been married for 14 years. And you know, anybody who's married knows marriage isn't easy. We're weird and we, we agree on being weird. When our anniversary comes around on November 30th, we don't do uh, anything. We tiptoe, 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 like, <laughs> You know, no grand gestures, because you never know. These people like Heidi Klum and, people, and Seal getting married every year and the grand gestures. Look at you now, Carrie Ann and Abba. Now, this is all I'm gonna say. I love you and I know that you are heartbroken for that. But for all of you on Dancing with the Stars all-star show that's about to come up in a few weeks. Every time, no, 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 look, 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 look. Every time Carrie Ann raises a paddle lower than a 10, you look at her and say, <laughs> read my mind. <laughs> That's why you ain't got no man. <laughs> I'm playing, I'm playing. Uh, all right, now let's talk about uh, Leanne Rhymes. Now, she's not the first celebrity to go to rehab, nor will she be the last, but she might be the first to go to rehab for cyberbullying. Oh, and I am so Team Leanne on this. Now, wait a minute. Because I thought it was drugs and alcohol, the way, you know, celebrity, you know, cyberbullying. Who goes to rehab for that, a grown woman? The day after her 30th birthday, she entered a treatment facility. Her reps say that it was for anxiety and stress uh, to learn coping mechanisms. Who goes to rehab for that? <laughs> right? I was all judgmental. I know you were too. That's why we get along. <laughs> but I'm going to break it down. Leanne is very active in social media. She's always on the Twitter and always on the Facebook. She reads all the comments about her. And you know, if you read enough stuff, you will, you, you will just feel horrible about yourself, but you can't read everything. People attack her and she fights back. She even sued two of her cyber bullies. I know, way too involved. Most of the criticism is about, well, what do you think? the affair that she had with Eddie Cibrian while they were filming the Lifetime movie Northern Lights, which broke up both of their marriages. He was married to Brandy Glanville from the Beverly Hills Housewife, a couple of kids. He, she, he had a happy home, or at least it would seem. And then she didn't have any children yet, but she also was married. And uh, then Eddie and Leanne divorced their re respective spouses, and they did what people don't normally do when you have an affair. They actually married one another and they've been married since 2011. 
Now the stats show that when you have an affair, only 10% of people actually marry one another because you probably spend the whole rest of the marriage wondering if he did it to me, he can do it to somebody. <laughs> you know, you know, if he did it to her, he'd do it to me. Exactly. So that's probably part of the rehab too. Coping mechanisms, coping is, <laughs> gosh, if I stole him, who's gonna steal him from me? But here's the thing. The people on Twitter and Facebook, social media, are not giving Leanne Rimes a break. They are calling her all kinds of home records and things like that. And remember though, you guys, before you say that's right, cause I'm the wife and I'm like, that's right. But have some compassion for once in your life. <laughs> Look, I'm gonna tell you why. Uh, because remember, Leanne's been through a lot in her life. She was famous by the age of 13. She sold over 37 million records worldwide. Reportedly, she's worth $38 million. She sued her own father for stealing from her. She got emancipated from her parents. You know, you know how that must be to like disown your parents? Then they made up later on in life, but it's still never the same. Like once I disown you, I'm always looking at you with the crooked eye. <laughs> and so that's a lot of pressure for this girl, Leanne. So she's 30 years old now, she's in rehab and hopefully, are you a little bit more compassionate now? Yeah. Who doesn't care? She's all, okay, good, good, thank you. And my suggestion to Leanne is that time is a forgiving tool and sometimes we don't give enough time for forgiveness. Uh, what I suggest you do, uh-huh, you need to gain a little weight. <laughs> I know you want children of your own, I've read, I know you're a country girl, I know you do. Gain a little weight, have a, a, you know, a baby or so and stay off social media, which brings me to my hot question of the day. Do you think that, um, oh, you like the hot question. <laughs> That's new for the season, thanks lady. <laughs> hot question of the day. Um, do you think that Leanne Rimes needs to delete her Twitter account? Yes. Go to wendyshow.com, we, we do wanna hear from you or you can go to Facebook, you can go to my Facebook page and, and tell it like it is. You don't have to just say yes about the Twitter. You can pontificate a couple of sentences as to, you know, that you'll never forgive her because she's a home wrecker, or that you know what, time is a forgiving tool. Listen, we asked Brandy Glanville, because you know she's a friend to the show on Twitter. We, excuse me, we tweeted her and asked her if she thinks that Leanne should delete her account. And Brandy tweeted us back in one word, and it's clearly, period. <laughs> Good luck, Leanne. Okay. There's a story that I've been resisting talking about, and, and, but I, I read my own Facebook page, not too much. I don't wanna get my feelings hurt, but. <laughs> Cause you're mean, sometimes. But look, I, I read the comments on my Facebook and my Twitter, and I know that you guys want me to talk about Chad Ochocinco and Evelyn. Yes. I don't wanna talk about them. I don't wanna talk about them because I think that their relationship is stupid and I think it was phony from the gate and I made no secret about that last season. But because it's popular demand and I am here to serve you, I'll talk. <laughs> but pardon my attitude and my lack of interest. Okay, so he's the former NFL star, Chad Ochocinco. There he is, and he desperately wants to get, uh, stay married to his estranged wife, uh, Evelyn Lozado. She's from the Basketball Housewives of uh, Miami. Um, anyway, according to TMZ, Chad has refused to sign the divorce papers. They were only married for five weeks. They got married July 4th. They tweeted it all over the Twitterverse. Evelyn filed for divorce after the five weeks because he headbutted her during an argument. <sighs> Number one, what kind of man headbutts? I will go on, but uh, I need to be restrained while I tell this story, because I'm, I'm about to attack somebody. Uh, Chad has apologized to Evelyn, and to prove his love to her, he got this stupid tattoo of her face on his stupid leg. P.S., it looks just like her. The tattoo artist is brilliant. However, he got this tattoo. Who gets a tattoo of their estranged wife? Uh, you know, uh, is this so that she won't file charges to put you in jail for a year? Because guess what? Uh, we checked and once you call the cops and 911 and get neighbors involved, any one of those uh, entities can file the charges even if Evelyn doesn't want to. Also, Evelyn, we've watched you run across tables and have your own temper flare up <laughs> since we've known you. And to me, to me, 
It appears that both of you have some sort of issue and you need to stay away from one another. Evelyn, I would not get back together with this joker. This tattoo is a joke. And can we move on from this? Yeah. There. Let's talk about another tattoo. This is Chris Brown. Chris Brown got this shocking tattoo on his neck. Everybody was saying it looked like Rihanna. I don't think it looks like Rihanna. My, even, even some people on my staff think it looks like Rihanna. I'm like, are you guys out of your mind? Chris Brown has a whole lot of this. He needs a whole lot of therapy still, even though we are loving his music, right? Yes. Oh, 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 oh. We, but, but he needs a whole lot of this to help out with the cuckoo. And I just think that this is some random angry woman. And if you look at it closely, it does look like the legendary singer, one of my faves in my iPod, Grace Jones. <laughs> However, uh, let's go straight to the source. We're gonna dead this right now. Chris Brown's tattoo artist, Peter, is joining us live from Los Angeles on the phone. Peter? Hey, how you doing? How you doing, Peter? I'm doing good, man, I'm doing good. Thank you so much, keep Peter. It, keep it out here in California. Thank you. And California. Thank you for waking up early with us. Okay, so Peter, uh, Chris has the new tattoo. Is this or is this not Rihanna? It is absolutely not Rihanna. Oh, wait, 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 wait don't, you know. shh, don't clap, you guys, okay. I can't hear. Okay, wait, wait, wait. So if it's not Rihanna, who is this picture of? It's just, it's just a, an iconic beauty, that's all. Like, it's just something that, you know, we kind of came up off of a, a reference picture that he brought me that was like a Mac. Um, a Mac poster and that's the or picture something that he, he had on Peter. his phone. Okay, right, right. perfect. So, and now who was with Chris at the time of getting this tattoo? Um, at the time of this tattoo, it was just his, his girlfriend. So his girlfriend was with us. So. Okay, so you know, the Kirchner or whatever. Um, and, and, and finally, yeah. Peter, uh, did he seem like he was in his right mind or was he a little to the left, maybe a glass of wine or two? <laughs> no way, man, he was uh, perfectly in, in sane mind. He had no, you yeah. Case. No drugs, no alcohol around. We were just, we were just tattooing, and that was it. Like, I, yeah, I got, I got paid to do a job, and, and I came out there and we did it. It was as professional as possible. Thank you, Peter. You've settled a big mystery.